Welcome back to the bench. As you can see, we are revisiting our BBC Model B, which is looking a lot cleaner than it did last time we saw it. Um, it looked like it had been really badly yellowed, and but the majority of that was just grime. As you can see, it's a lot tidier now, and she switches on. And if you can see from the screen, we also have our Turbo MMC installed in this. So what I want to quickly go over is what was actually wrong with this machine? Why was it not turning on? When we first turned it on, we got nothing, no response, no audio, no nothing. Um, so I went through the service manual and checked all the jumper settings and I found the jumper settings for the RAM were not set correctly. So it looks like somebody tried maybe fixing it, um, tried various jumper options, messed it up. So I reset all the jumper options and when I switched on, I got a black screen with a flashing cursor and a continuous audio tone. Um, this perplexed me for some time and then I figured out the top off what's causing the, at least part of the problem. Um, the keyboard connector cable was broken. There were several conductors on there that weren't working. And apparently on this particular revision, I'm not sure if it's on all revisions, this is an issue for board, um, that if the keyboard is not connected, the system won't boot. I think if you pull pin three, is it here? No. It's one of these pins. If it's not connected, it will not boot. There we go. So now you can see we have we have the tone and then it stops and then we have the black flashing cursor. Now the problem I was getting was it was a continuous tone. None of the keyboard or shift lock or any, any of these LEDs were lighting up. It was just a, a, just a continuous tone. So once I figured out that there were several connectors broken on the ribbon cable, I put this on here in place. This is just um, some DuPont connectors. It's way too long. Uh, they're individual ones, so it's a bit of a pain. Um, but it does the job. It allows the computer to switch on. We have our uh, cursor and, you know, BBC Microcomputer 32K. So, that was coming up. Um, but I was still getting the continuous tone. And the keys would work sporadically. So I thought the issue was a keyboard, so I actually spent ages um, going over, working on the keyboard, thinking that it was a bad solder joint somewhere on one of the main traces. Um, let me down a few rabbit holes. Um, but it was um, nothing to do with the actual keys themselves. Um, one of the problems was this chip here, the uh, 74LS163. That chip was faulty and that does part of the uh, the scanning for the keyboard. Um, the main reason I figured out that it was something to do with the keyboard initially, which was given the black screen, is that I went through the service manual, did all the checks, went and checked all the address pins with my oscilloscope, and one thing I noticed was that the uh, IRQ line was being held high. So, that led me to believe that either there was a faulty chip or something else that was causing that. Um, it turned out it was just this keyboard cable that was causing it. And the way I found that out is um, I pulled out this 6522 and all of a sudden the system booted. Um, but obviously you couldn't use the keyboard because there was no keyboard connected. Put the chip back in, the problem started again. So that's when I started checking all the uh, cables here and found the issue. Um, and then for the continuous sound issue, um, that was a different problem. And I noticed that the LEDs here were not really functioning. So I looked at the circuit diagram and if you look at it, you can see that um, 
the LEDs are actually controlled via another chip, which is this chip up here, which is the uh, 74LS259. And that chip was faulty. Um, so once I replaced these two chips, and obviously a new ribbon cable, configured all the jumpers correctly, the girl, good old girl bounced straight back into life. And yeah, she's been uh, shooting ever since, you know, doing a bit of retro gaming. Uh, as I said, see, you've got the Turbo MMC in there, so I can load up and uh, play some uh, games and yeah, have some fun. So let's boot up our MMC and see. What games we have? One of my favorites back in the day was Chucky Egg. I played that game for hours and hours and hours, and there we go. Oh, ARF software. Please stop tape. Um, there's no tape. So obviously this was copied from the tape version. ANS software presents Chucky Egg. S to start. How many players? We have one player. It's been many, many years since I played this game. Oh, you just missed me. Ha ha. Uh, no. Is he coming down? Yeah. And his friend is too. Oh, you just missed me again. Seems I don't, uh, haven't lost my mad chuggy egg running skills. Oh, forgot to jump there. Oh no, he's gonna get the bird. Nah, well, too late. He's, he's gonna get the seed. Oh, and then I died. <laughs> well, I guess I need some more practice at playing chuggy egg. Let's just go break and start off. Okay, so um, this is our uh, Turbo MMC. We've seen this on a previous video I did where I had it running on the um, the BBC Master. So to change discs, you just do star D in and then say, let's go to disc 10. Start up. And there we have it. And this looks like Pascal. Let's see what it is. PCB 1601. AST ROM. No, it doesn't seem to be wanting to boot. Okay. Well, we can look at that another time. Um, another common thing with these boards is the ashtray. And if you remember from the previous video, this thing was had been punched out. I still had it, luckily. Um, but somebody had done a really, really, really bad job of um, putting some parcel tape or something on there underneath to hold it on, which obviously didn't work because, you know, you could press it and it would just go straight back down. Um, I'll turn it over. This is the, uh, the RAM board, which I've reattached to the underside of the lid. Um, this thing works fine. I just have it disconnected at the moment so I could show you the uh, the insides of here, so I've got to be careful not to bend any pins on there. And basically what I did for the ashtray is, I just used a piece of um, foam card and some double-sided tape, which then brought this obviously to the level of the plastic. And then I got another piece of foam card and kind of just peeled the top surface off and 
um, just smoothed it down with a bit of sandpaper to make it level and put that on, on top of here and then attach the cover from the ashtray on there to make it look good again. Obviously that only works if you uh, have the original cover, if it's been pulled out and lost over time then yeah sadly you cannot reattach that um, but I was lucky in this case so I mean yeah I mean it looks pretty good I'm certainly not going to complain another one of my uh, favorite games of all time um, was probably um, Sometimes it doesn't like. There we go. Another favorite game of mine of all time was Elite. Let's see if we can find it on here. Um, no. Okay. Is it on here? Yeah, we're, there we go. Elite. Econsoft. Load new commander. No. And we get our default. Commander Jameson. Now I used to play this uh, this game for hours and hours and hours on end. Trying to get up to the rank of elite, exploring all the, I think it's eight or nine galaxies. I think it's eight. Um, and then, yeah, with the galactic hyperdrive. And then eventually you come back to um, the first galaxy, which for me was always my favorite galaxy because, you know, you had Lave and Disso in there. Um, you set up all your trade routes, you know, where to go and buy things. So many an hour's spent playing this and of course I now play Elite Dangerous um, on there on the uh, the PC and so yeah I was extremely happy when I heard that there was going to be a new version of Elite and yeah the whole um, being able to, to buy ships and kit them out differently was just fantastic you know it's like uh, a boyhood a dream come true so yeah so the moral of this one is that if you ever have a BBC Model B and it's giving you just a black screen with a flashing cursor, the first thing to do is to check the keyboard cable. Because obviously if that um, fourth wire in here or the power cable even, because yeah, the keyboard's not getting any power, it's still not gonna work. I do believe on later revisions, um, I've seen some uh, other videos um, by other YouTubers where they've had a, a issue seven motherboards and the system powers up fine without the keyboard connected. Um, I'm sure you could do the same here if you just loop um, this wire back so that it thinks that the keyboard is uh, connected. Um, I'm not sure if it needs any kind of signal or it's just a high and a low that tool will uh, trick it in. Um, I've added a heat sink to this chip here because it just does get very hot even now this heat sink is quite warm. Some of the other chips get hot as well so I will probably end up um, putting on um, heat sinks on these. Um, here is our OS ROM and our basic ROM. Sadly um, they don't have the original ROMs. Somebody obviously took them out. Maybe they, they blew them up um, put them in the wrong way or something, fried chips. Um, so they, yeah, they just put in burnt copies. It's our uh, normal DFS ROM. It's the 32K RAM expansion. Um, there, and it's going to this as a serial number of 32,246. And yeah, that's the Turbo MMC ROM. Um, I just, uh, yeah copied that um, so I could leave the other one in the master so you know I didn't have to keep opening up the computers to pull the chips out to uh, run the uh, Turbo MMC on a different machine. Let me just take a quick look at that. Let me just flip the beep over and this is 
This is one of the newer versions. Um, I've seen some others that are a, a lot larger than this and others that um, have uh, just a cable, ribbon cable coming uh, to the board remotely. But uh, yeah, this is definitely the uh, the smallest version of it I have seen. Um, I think from what I read, this is a, a, a little four layer board, which you know, explains why they made it, was able to make it so compact. But yeah, this is, you know, a great thing. Not only for, uh, so you don't have to have a, you know, the disk drive set up, um, but if you do have it set up, you can use it for archiving your old disks, like I showed in my, uh, one of my master videos earlier. So I'm going to go and have a bit of fun and play a bit more Chucky Egg, maybe a little bit of old school Elite. Um, and yeah, maybe introduce the uh, kids to a little bit of uh, retro computing, you know, show them the games that uh, their father used to play when he was a boy. Um, could be interesting. So for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and um, if you have any friends who you think would like this kind of content then you know please uh, you know let them know and uh, they can come and take a look and uh, if they're interested they can uh, subscribe as always thank you for watching